where the book title comes from and the script title comes from is the, is the when we're in the camper van, they're so fucked up that they don't actually realise that they run out of petrol in the fast lane of the motorway. This is TRL, this is a test facility, and it's where we are filming the motorway shot today. The shot is too dangerous to shoot on an actual motorway itself. The, the scene involves a stationary car on a fast lane, with the police pulling him over. It'd be weird if you think you're still moving that's and what you I, that's hear a knock on the window. But that's what I thought, yeah. that's what I was thinking. Yeah. So I hear a knock on the window and it says a double shock about you. Fuck that copper can run fast. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Ray Wines of Instagram. Hello. Copper, he says, what, what the, the fuck do you think you're doing? Ray puts on his, like, uh, his best, you know, college blue voice. He says, oh, oh I'm terribly sorry. Sorry, officer, were we going a tad over the speed limit? This line down the middle, you've got half the frame is the motorway, and then the other half, we're going to mirror, so it'll be the traffic going the other way. So it'll look like you've got two lanes of traffic. Portman, of course, is Claire, the person he marries, who he meets after her cello concert. And I, I'm led to believe, uh, from talking to Stuart's family, that it's kind of pretty close to the truth of how he actually met his wife. She's someone who has obviously had quite a, probably quite a complicated life before she meets Noah. And then she meets him, decides that she wants to share her life with him, and they have all sorts of um, difficulties. So. Oh my god. Oh no. Etta is Claire's best friend. And this is Noah. Oh my god. He's adorable. Hello. Something came out of me that I think, I hope I've seen in other people, but I think Saf and Peter did hint that there was a lot of me in Etta. Etta is very threatened by Noah, and Noah is very threatened by Etta. But if we don't get our way, I don't think we put up a fight. I suppose you could say say we're easy going. I suppose you could also say that you're a scary manipulative witch. Are you easy going Noah? Oh I don't like you darling. But Etta's much much cleverer and more devious at dealing with it than Noah is. Noah just goes to pieces and can't cope. This weird dominating horrible overbearing self-obsessed woman just leapt out of my throat and I'm like where have you been? And Etta takes him to his dark side easier than anybody else that he meets in the story. So basically what I do is I'll yeah. so go down there, yeah. do the thinking, 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 yeah. then he imagines the flame flower. Yeah. Say when Zara. Set. Set and... Hang on. Action! God, this hamper's bloody heavy, I'm sweating cobs here. So what am I going to do when I get there? What's the best approach? First impressions and all that. I'll run through a few options I'd like to do. We did have a lot of fun with what everybody's calling the muff shot. The scene is, she speaks to him in a, in a crowded party, she's got no knickers on and she keeps flashing her parts at him. Look, there was no muff in it, but there was a merkin. I know that there, there is such a thing as a merkin, but I'd never seen an actual pubic wig before. There was a moment that I just might, I just got, I was terrified. I had sweaty palms and I thought, oh my God, what am I doing? Putting this merkin on. It was just sort of like, my God, I know this isn't mine, but it could be. And it looks like one. I don't want to say like mine, because <laughs> it was so long. <laughs> what was the name of that? And with that, the Girl. curtain closes on the Muff Matinee. Next show, 7.30. Kirsten is someone that he meets when he's about to do this uh, lecture at the, this university. She is um, an ex-alcoholic who meets Peter's character, Noah Arkwright, in the depths of his alcoholism. <coughs> he sees Kirsten walking across the quad and decides that he's going to have her uh, and wakes up the following morning in her six-year-old son's bedroom. <coughs> What I want to actually try and do is I want to try and find something, some kind of uh, 
diluted porridgey mm. bile type of thing and maybe even the, even if you put some vinegar in it that will make me vomit I can sort of half swallow it because it's when she's when she's behind him and it'd be really good to see it a fair we amount. Don't make you sick, though. We no, don't I don't mind. Peter and I had to try and keep a straight face while he was throwing up mashed banana with bits of jam in it mixed with orange juice to make it look like vomit. And it looks so disgusting and up on a great big screen. I d I'm not sure that it won't make people actually physically vomit. We're doing the very first scene in the film this morning, running out of the church. Car with a camera in the back of uh, <laughs> Elliot's car. All mod cons as usual. What's going on with my car? It's a camera tracking vehicle for the day. They've got their money's worth out of me, I can tell you that. I've got to do a lot of running today. Yeah, when I realised I shouldn't have been smoking. Yeah, I've been smoking 20 fags a day, that's training. Because the most important thing is the face, to see the guy. This is the guy this film is about. Bang. Stop. Well, basically what's happening is that Kirsten takes a note to an AA meeting, and then he sneaks up from the car so he does a, a big load of cocaine. Then he has a flip out, he runs out of the AA meeting, hotly pursued by Kirsten, and also me, his best friend Ray Molina, who's been hiding behind the pew number four, and they pursue him down the road, and he collapses in the middle of the street, having a nasty. Yards, you're like, oh, I've so got this off. And then the next 30 yards are fine, and then you suddenly go, no. I can't do it, yeah. Yeah. Very good, that was brilliant. That was absolute brilliant energy, and the, the line was fantastic. Well, my character, uh, Ray, is, is Noah's best friend. He's his, his DP, he's his cameraman. And I'm, I was a hardened drinker, more so in a way than Noah was. And that's what something Noah always look up to me and admire about me, was like, in when I was completely off my fucking trousers. Um, I could actually hold it together, I could drive, I could operate the camera, I could direct and things like that, whereas he couldn't, the wheels would definitely fall off when he was drinking and taking drugs. The financial constraints were dictating that we had to find those, those foreign elements that were in the script in this country. It was felt that the actual cost of dressing something like the Moroccan market wasn't very different to actually going to Morocco itself. This is the market in Marrakesh. We've just been walking all around the around the back here to pick some spots for the, uh, the dope peddler scene and the um, well when he collapses and, and hurts himself and they said the, the tribesman says you must go home because you're not well. Um, we've just been mooching about getting some lovely there's lovely slatted roofs and if it's sunny the sun will shine down. There's a lovely flavour and atmosphere. This is the main square area which gets much busier at night apparently. We're just having a cup of tea before we head down to Essaouira. 